Well, hello YouTube, and today I'm going to talk about these little beauties. What are they? They are current transformers. I'm going to tell you a little about how they work and what kind of things you can do with them. Stand by. All right. Now, how does a current transformer or a CT work? Well, it works kind of like a regular transformer works. This is a voltage transformer, but it takes a voltage in, which is 120 or 240, and converts it to either 12 volts if you connect them in parallel, or 24 volts if you connect them in a series. And it doesn't start pulling current until you hook it up to a load. Now a current transformer, it picks up the magnetic field from the wire. No current flowing through the wire, there is no current flowing out of the current transformer. So how do you measure how many amps is coming out of the CT? Do you stick an amp meter across there? Well, no, actually what you do is you put a resistor across there. Or in this case, you put it across these wires and what will that what will that do well just like ohm's law tells us it'll do if you have a short circuit you're not going to have any voltage coming through there it'll be all current but if you put a resistor across there you now have a voltage built up across that resistor that can be measured Situations call for different uh, sized resistors. Generally, they go anywhere from 25 ohms to about 200 ohms. All depends on what you're doing. I'll show you how to set that up and measure it uh, a little bit later. Now, CTs can come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes. The smaller the CT, the less current you're going to have uh, be able to put through it. Uh, there are small board mount CTs like this. And once again, there's not much for markings on it, but I know this one is good to about 5 amps or so. And you would hook your resistor up to the secondary here. I'm not going to tear down one of these things, but basically what the CT is, is basically just like that. It's a uh, powder metal transformer core, powder metal core with a copper wire wrapped around it. Uh, difference is the CTs, that's a really, really light wire, and there's hundreds and hundreds of turns on it. Now, just to be certain that we're on the same page here, I just want to make sure that you understand this is an AC current transformer. This won't work with DC. You can't hook it up to your car battery and measure how much current your starter is drawing. And what I'll show you here next is I'll just hook this up and we'll put an AC current going through there and we'll see the uh, AC voltage coming out of the secondary. However, before I do that, I'll uh, show you um, what these numbers all mean on here and uh, talk a little bit about uh, safely handling these. Now you'll notice there is these markings here. This is 200 to 5. What that means is if you have 200 amps flowing through your wire, you'll have 5 amps coming out of oops, the secondary of the transformer or the CT. For this one here, this is 200 to 0.2. So if you have 200 amps going through this transformer, you'll have 200 milliamps coming out of the secondary or these wires here. Okay, let me give you a little... Uh, talk here on safety handling with CTs. If you have your wire through it and you have current going through it and you leave it open like this or you've got this type of CT and you leave the wires open, you can damage the CT, not to mention if you touch that you're going to get a pretty good shock. The voltage coming out of there can be pretty high. It can actually be high enough to melt down the the wires and things that they've got on there. The proper way to do it is to short the wires. One like this, you would just put a uh, shorting bar or just a piece of copper wire across both of them and clamp it down so 
if there is a current going through there these stay shorted that's not going to damage it at all the current will just flow through the secondary here one like this you would basically just uh, tie the wires together and that would be shorted all right let me show you what i got going on here i've got a heating element sitting on top of a chunk of wood with some uh, screws sticking out of it so in case that thing gets uh, too hot it doesn't actually burn anything I've got 120 volts coming into there I've got a small CT that CT is going to measure the AC amps coming through the hot line it's going to turn that into a voltage when I threw that 100 ohm resistor I've got across the CT. I'm going to measure that with the voltage with a voltmeter here. And we'll measure the actual current going into the element with our current, with our current meter. I'm going to control the current with this variac. Okay, I've got this thing hooked up and ready to go. Power's on. AC amp meter and AC voltmeter. I'm going to go ahead and start cranking this thing up. Crank it up to one amp here and see what we get for voltage. All right, at one amp, we got 0.1 volts AC. Hopefully this thing will go along and it'll be at exact divide by 10 that's pretty close it's actually real close 0.199 and 2 volts now let's try two and a half see what happens there's two and a half amps and 0.245 volts ac coming off the ct okay what i'm going to do here is smoothen out the ac i'm going to put this thing through a uh diode capacitor here. I've got a 911N914 diode and I'm just going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to put it through and show you that it's a lot harder to control when we add these other elements to it. Now I've got a 100 ohm resistor across the CT and that's just too low. You have to get it above the 0.7 volt drop of the diode to really make this thing work properly. In these lower uh, amp amounts, it's just not there's not a high enough voltage across that 100 ohm resistor. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and bump that up, and I'll take out the decade resistor box to do that. All right, here is the uh, decade box, and I'm gonna go ahead and just crank this up to about 500 ohms, and I'll play with it and see what I need to do here. Now this is better here. I've got a half amp going through there, and I've got. 50 milliamps coming out still not great but it works a lot better actually I have 600 ohms across this thing and I'll just go ahead and crank it up to an amp and see what happens and you can see what's happening here is this is now up to 300 milliamps with one amp in there which means the resistance would actually have to come back down and within the lower the amperage, the higher resistor you need, and the higher the amperage, the lower the resistor you need. So it gets to be kind of a real pain in the ass to get this a happy medium. You got to kind of pick a range of uh, current that you want, and then go ahead and pick the resistor. Then the resistor for what you're going to be using it for, and you got to kind of just get in the ballpark, and then. You got to use a lot of lookup tables if you're going to put a microcontroller and things on it, which I'm not going to do in this video. If there's enough interest uh, in this video, I'll probably make another one, but for now, I'll just leave it as is. Well, that's just about it for CTs. And now that you know the basics of these things, you can pick one up and start experimenting. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up if it's any use to you. And if you're still watching by now, you're just a kind of uh, person who should be subscribing to this channel. So please subscribe. And I'll see you next time.